Hello, this is Phil and welcome back to Andrew Casey Show. Today we got Barnes & Noble's new HD Plus. So HD Plus is a kind of a family model of new HD that we've seen recently. And um, it's not exactly this much of a size difference. It looks kind of big in the screen. But anyway, uh, these guys are almost identical in the specs, but design language is totally different. Uh, it's got a, it's, I have to say it, new HD is one of the oldest tablets I've seen, and New HD Plus is actually one of the prettiest tablets I've ever seen. I wonder what the differences are, but um, anyway. So um, this is a 7-incher with the 1440 and uh, by 900, and this is a 9-incher with the 1920 by 1080. That's a full HD uh, 1080p display, and uh, let's focus more on the HD Plus. So um, it's got a 9-inch full HD display with the home key on the bottom, and on the right next to it is a strap hole that you can uh, put up a strap haul we don't usually see this quite often these days and quite quite good of a design accent right there and on the top is a volume rocker on the right is a power key along with that is a 3.5 millimeters headphone jack right there don't expect much of a sound quality there it's quite awful and uh, on the back we do not see a usual cameras or anything anything fancy like that since it's a media uh, consuming tablet we don't have anything like that and the new logo over there and a speaker surprisingly enough new HD plus only only features a single mono speaker uh, in contrast to the new HD which had a stereo speaker uh, with a very decent sound quality well well, I can deal with that. And on the bottom is a micro SD card slot, expandable up to 64 gigabytes, and the USB port right there, seemingly compatible with the uh, Galaxy Tabs or the iPads, but not at all. This proprietary port is uh, cable is quite expensive, so try not to break it. It's quite pricey. And uh, turning it on gives us the Android screen. Uh, it doesn't initially come with the an stock Android like this. It's Initially, it comes with the Barnes & Noble's customized operating system based on the Android 4.0.3, and it's not exactly great. Its performance-wise is uh, kind of sluggish, and even though after the update it's got a Play Store, but um, for the sake of uh, performances and stability, please flash to see him. Uh, I do not usually uh, take reviews on the custom ROMs, but um, I had to. The original one was so terrible. So here we go. It's with the uh, CM and it's based on 4.2.2 Jelly Bean. They're coming with the 4.3 pretty soon, so wait for that, it's still in the nightly status, but it is coming soon. And with the trim support, it's expected to get a better performances. Alrighty, for now, uh, the internal specs are, as I mentioned, exactly the same with the new HD, except for the display and the slightly faster uh, clock speed. So getting into the CPU-Z, we can see that, um, this guy's got a dual core. Uh, this is an OMAP 4 series, 4430 as I recall, and uh, in at 1.3 gigahertz, and this guy's in 1.5 gigahertz. It was enough for the seven incher guy, but for the nine incher, not quite well. Um, it's not like it's having some terrible lags or anything, but um, overall, the frame looks decent when you get into the basic launchers, but when you kind of rotate the screen, if it ever does, and or when you go surf the web through your browser, and when it loads up, it's quite laggy. And uh, scrolling isn't as snappy as I want it to be. Although I do have to mention the display, the full HD display on this guy is quite nice. It's one of the best displays I've ever seen on a tablet, and it doesn't. Um, have any problems. The problem that we do have is not on the display panel itself, but the touchscreen panel. The TSP does have a problem, it has one of the cheapest TSPs in the market, and uh, when you're scrolling around, you don't see it when you use it casually, but there are some losses of the touches or the kind of flicking in the touches, so it might make you not exactly happy when you're have lots of touches on the screen. So bear that in mind. Other than that, the overall performance is are okay, but you do have to change the density since you are most likely to flash the CM or any custom ROMs. You will have the, your root authorities and um, you might have to change your density a bit um, to the larger scale to bring up the performances. 
kind of lags in tablet mode. Other than that, this is a quite good tablet. The video performance, the video playback is pretty good, and the speaker, as I mentioned, is very decent. So with that in mind, this is one of the best tablets with that price range. And um, with this much of a complement of the Nuke HD Plus, you might as well ask which one you should buy, uh, the Nuke HD or the HD Plus. This guy is a 7 inch or 9 inch or all the specs differences, of course. A uh, 7 inch guy does have its problems. Oh, the touchscreen problems is universal along the Nuke series. And the 7 inch guy, the problem with the 7 inch guy is the cheap looking plastic and um, this ugly design and um, size might not exactly be f fulfilling to your usage and so on and so forth. And 9 inch guy do, does have its problem. It's kind of, I don't know, uh, it's not exactly snappy and um, it might have performance issues and so on. And you might prefer the smaller one. And um, so which one you should buy? I suggest both actually. I, I know how stupid it might sound when you hear me say buy both, but Actually, li listen, listen, quite ca keep calm and listen. Um, these two guys combined, you can buy this. This is like 69 to 79 bucks, and this is like 119 to 129. These two guys combined, you can't buy a iPad mini with the Retina display. You can actually buy two sets of these with the one price of the iPad mini with the Retina display, not to mention the iPad Air. So with these prices, if you're not exactly aiming for a all-in-one tablet and if you don't mind a slightly cheaper looking design you can actually keep this at home in front of your telly when you want to surf off the web watching a tv show and you can carry these around put this in a bag and forget where it is and just take it out when you want to surf the web on the go doesn't that sound reasonable i think that's reasonable that's why i have two and um so with that in mind for is price ranges these two tablets are one of the best, the best, I haven't decided yet, but one of the best, let's stick with that for now. One of the best tablets for its price range, given its price range. Not the best tablet in the market, um, uh, what is that, not to mention the t prices, but with the prices. So with that in mind, these two tablets are definitely worth buying, especially at the prices that they're selling with the refurbished version. So that's the final verdict for the new HD and the HD Plus. And do not forget to tap on there to subscribe to my channel, to listen to my sometimes not exactly um, making sense verdicts. This was under KG, and we'll see you guys in the later reviews. Thank you always for watching. Bye.